Thank you so much. So last talk before lunchtime for today's invitation a little bit more, but I can't keep up. So I'm Massimo Mariello from IPFL, postdoc Pat Scientist, and today I'm going to talk about microfabricated food sensitive germination sensors for encapsulations of compliant uh, implantable bioelectronics. This is the outline of the presentations. So uh, after a brief introduction about the implantable bioelectronics, I will uh, explain how to measure water permeation through the encapsulations. And I will describe also a novel method that we uh, developed for bioassessment based on magnesium sensors and how we integrated these magnesium sensors into bioelectronic implants. So the general context of this activity is uh, implantable bioelectronics. So depending on the functionality of the transducers that we want to, to use, we can have several types of uh, uh, implants. Uh, we can have electrode arrays, uh, optical devices, microfluidic systems, but also electromechanical transducers. And the common element of all these implants is that they are in contact with biofluids. So they need hermetic packages and uh, barrier encapsulations to be protected. So in our work, we propose innovative codings and also novel methods for barrier assessment. Um, as you can see in this slide, the standard car current technologies for encapsulating bioelectronic implants are based either on rigid microscopic cups made of titanium or ceramic materials or softer silicone encapsulations, but both cases are bulky, unsuitable for the next generation of bioelectronic implants, which instead needs uh, require flexibility and also thin film conformal encapsulations. As you can see here, the common metric that is used to evaluate, to compare also the barrier performances of encapsulations is the so-called water vapor transmission rate, so WVTR. And this basically measures the amount of water that passes through the barrier through the encapsulation per unit area and per unit time, so grams per meter square per day. And depending on the value of this WVTR and also the thickness of the barrier, we can distinguish several categories of uh, encapsulations. In particular, for the barriers of the next generation of bioelectronic implants, we need very low um, values of WVTR, at least lower than 10 to the minus 5, and low values of thicknesses. Here you see uh, an example of encapsulations with which uh, we work on. Um, this is a multi layer structure uh, based on uh, made of organic layers and inorganic layers, for example, pyrene C and metal oxides. And in this way, we have an overall thickness less than 10 micrometers. In this way, the water, uh, the, the pathway of the water molecules is more tortuous, so we have uh, an increased barrier performance. But the main question now is how to practically measure the barrier properties of these types of uh, high barrier encapsulations. Um, we can distinguish two methods. So the first method uh, is um, based on diffusion chambers. You can see here, basically, we put the barrier in the middle of this chamber. On the left, we have um, water vapor. On the uh, right, we have an inert gas. So with the passing of high molecules pass from left to right. And this mixture of gases then is analyzed by a cover system. But these systems are bulky and not sensitive enough. So we have indirect metals that are based on sensors. Uh, they could be based on optical, electrochemical, electrical, or mechanical principles. Uh, but basically, we have a sensor that is very close to the barrier or even attached to the barrier. And a, a, a parameter that is in, an indirect parameter can be then uh, monitored and operationally correlated with the WVTR of the barrier. The problem is that many of these methods are not suitable for implantable systems. So that's why we developed a new method that is called the magnesium test. And this method is based on magnesium sensors. Um, and it, it's based on the real time monitoring of the electrical resistance of some magnesium micro patterns on these sensors. And this, um, sorry, and this is also, um, this provides a very low sensitivity, the lowest sensitivity among all the methods that I mentioned before. So 3.3, 10 to the minus eight grams per meter square per day. So a record value. And basically we uh, produce rigid sensors for this electrical test. But in order to uh, take into account also the deformation of the sensors to resemble the real application of bioelectronic implants, we developed flexible and stretchable sensors. And finally, we integrated the magnesium test into active implants. 
And the method is also very robust and universal because it can be used for any testing condition, accelerating aging in wet air, in water vapor, but also in vitro, in PDS, and ex vivo, in vivo. And I will show you quickly. So here I summarize the, all the sensors that we developed. So rigid sensors, flexible sensors, stretchable sensors, and magnesium integrated impacts. Let's start with the first one. So these sensors, we call them um, magnesium test cards, and they are based on thermally evaporated uh, magnesium patterns on glass substrate. And then we have inert gold interconnections. Here you can see a simplified design. And um, just to show you that the ends of the interconnections of each magnesium sensor, magnesium stripe, is um, soldered with a couple of wires in order to perform four point probe measurements and to have an accurate real time monitoring of the resistance. And these are the results in terms of um, resistance uh, in time, so the evolution of the resistance uh, for three different temperatures, 37 until 85 degrees. You can see that with the increasing of temperature, uh, we have a steeper curve. And here you see also the evolution of the morphology, the surface morphology of the magnesium, which is not uniform, uh, neither regular. Um, if we zoom in, we can see that after the thermal evaporation, in fact, the magnesium is quite flat. And after the corrosion, some spots and highlands appear, and these are made of uh, magnesium hydroxide according to this chemical reaction. If we put a barrier on top of, the, of these magnesium uh, sensors, we have the same type of curve. And here, for example, I show you barium C with two thicknesses at accelerating uh, temperature. And you can see that increasing the thickness uh, leads to a delay in the completion of the corrosion. But if we zoom in the very first range and we use a proper analytical model, we can correlate the WETR of the parallel in this case with the variation in time of the electrical conductance. And we have this plot. So we can see different ranges. So a progressive uh, change of the WETR. Initially, we have only the diffusion through the barrier. Then we have a gradually, uh, gradual formation of the magnesium hydroxide. And finally, there is a stabilization. So all the magnesium is corroded and we have only magnesium hydroxide, which is not, uh, not conductive. Now let's pass to the flexible sensors. So we wanted to add another um, parameter that is the mechanical loading um, to the sensors. In this case, we have, again, magnesium uh, resistance, so magnesium patterns more or less wide, depending on the design, uh, inert interconnection, and they are embedded in a, a 10 micrometer thick polyimide, which is the most common uh, polymer used for bioelectronic implants. Here you see the sensor after the corrosion of magnesium. So magnesium becomes transparent as hydroxide, and this is a cross-section, polyimide, polyimide, and the magnesium that becomes porous, especially in this, uh, in this part, you can see, and this is typical of the magnesium hydroxide. And why, um, why do, we have, do we need these sensors? Because we can uh, test them in dynamic mode. Here you have, uh, yeah, no, sorry, video. You can see this is a specific chamber where we can put the sensor. And um, this is in liquid. So we can make tensile tests uh, in liquid. And these are snapshots of the shape of the device while doing the, the tensile test. So uh, these are the results. Again, the same um, resistance curves. You can see we used two designs. These curves are for the static mode without any loading. And these are for the dynamic lo uh, mode. So we can see that there is always a shift leftwards of the curve, which means that the corrosion is accelerated when, you, when uh, we apply a mechanical loading. But if we, if we zoom in this region, there is no significant change in the slope. So basically, the diffusion through the barrier is the same. Let's pass to the stretchable sensors now. Stretchable, uh, you can see here, again, different designs. But basically, we have magnesium serpentines, inert interconnections. They are embedded, again, in polyamide, which is patterned, and then embedded in a, an elastomer, so PDMS. And they are very stretchable. And they allow, allow us to make other tests in terms of stretchability and to correlate the WBTR with the stretchability. You can see here, we can apply a fixed uh, pre-stretching to the, to the sensors. 
so different pre-stretching uh, ratios. And then we can solve again the devices in, uh, in PDS. And uh, here are the results, especially here, I summarize in this plot, the WVTR increases with the pre-stretching pre -stretching strain and ratio. And this is um, expected because uh, when, you, when you stretch the devices, you have a larger free void volume. And there is also a contribution of the applied mechanical stress to the corrosion of the mechanism. Finally, uh, I apologize in advance for these images, but we demonstrated that the next vivo characterization of the devices. So we implanted them in um, chicken breast, in uh, beef sirloin, and also calf liver. So different types of tissues in order to see how they behave in, um, in, in real tissues. And uh, these are the results again. And you can see, maybe we can accelerate here in this plot. Um, uh, for example, the liver, uh, in the liver, the, the WVTR is higher. We, it, instead, in the chicken breast, it's lower. So this means that the environment, the real environment, has an impact on the, on the diffusion. The liver is, is more, let's say, wet, so it's more aggressive. But then these sensors are, so this method is robust to um, characterize the barrier properties in the real uh, tissues. Finally, I don't have time to uh, go into the details of this, but I will show you just a snapshot of how we integrated the magnesium sensors into real implants. So you can see here, these are uh, magnesium integrated flexible electrocorticography implants for recording the neural activity from the brain. This is an explanted brain from a pig. And uh, this is the structure of the device. So we can see an electrode to record the signal. And here it's uh, a mag magnesium crown, a ring, so a sensor. And we could correlate the loss in performance during, during the implantation of the, of the ECOG devices with the corrosion rate of the magnesium. And the second uh, category I want to show you is the magnesium integrated wireless platform. So we developed a system that can be fully implantable and can uh, wirelessly um, monitor real time the, the barrier performances of the encapsulations. We have a, a flexible PCB that can be remotely powered with, through a, an inductive coil. We have a backscatter system to, uh, with a wireless antenna to send the, the data. And then we have a disposable magnesium inserts, a flexible uh, device where we have a where we have a, here our magnesium sensor, and this is encapsulated in the selected uh, barrier that we wanted to characterize. So in conclusion, uh, we developed this method that is uh, novel, universal for barrier assessment. It's ultra sensitive. We demonstrated it in an ex vivo characterization test. Uh, we managed to correlate also the WETR with the flexibility and stretchability. And we developed uh, this uh, implantable systems, so a wireless system, and we integrate it into real implants. For future outlook, uh, we will characterize the sensors with specific uh, ultra low barrier, ultra low permeability encapsulations, and we uh, we will make possibly in vivo implantation in a living animal model. So, conclusion: I acknowledge the projects I'm working on. My two labs in UQFL, the, our industrial partner who provides us with the, with the encapsulations, the multi-layer structures, and also all the technicians from the VIS Center, Campus Biotech, and the Centers for Micro Nanotechnology and the Electron Microscopy, PPFL. And I thank you for your patience and attention. Thanks.